the whole manifested world goes to show us what use we have made of God's gift. Receiving a gift does not mean that we're going to use it wisely, but we have the gift. Everyone has the gift. And the world simply reflects the use of that gift. In the Merchant of Venice, Shakespeare puts these words into the mouth of Portia. If to do were as easy as to know what were good to do, chapels had been churches, and poor men's cottages, princes, palaces. It is a good divine who follows his own instructions. I can easier teach twenty what were good to be done than to be one of the twenty to follow my own teaching. And so you and I have been given a gift. To what you have been put it? In a book written in the first century, written at the time of our gospel, called the Hermeticum. And this is a translation by Walter Scott. It's a wonderful series of four volumes. And in this he said, there are two gifts that God has given to man alone and to no other mortal creature. And these two gifts are mind and speech. And the gifts of mind and speech are essential and identical with immortality. If they are used rightly, man will not differ in any respect from the immortal. And when he quits the body, these two will be his guides, and they will lead him into the troop of the gods, and to the soul to the king to bliss. So he's not speaking of any outer speech. For well, you and I have had this experience, I know I have, many times. You've gone to a party, and many people you do not know, and you meet them, and the usual greeting. Nice to know you. What a joy to know you. Pleased to meet you. And the usual cliches. And then you have drinks and your little orders. And then the party breaks up and we all separate. And you hear someone say, what a creep. What a bore. Yet it was so pleased to meet them. What a joy to know them. The outer words did not conform whatsoever with what they were really thinking on the inside. And God sees not the outer man, he sees the inner man. It's the inner speech that is frozen in the world round about us. The whole vast world is but frozen inner speech. What are we saying on the inside? We may think that someone really understands us. And you'll go along believing that they understand you. And one simple little thing happens, and you realize they never really hurt you. Not for one moment had they really hurt you. Some little disruption. And then the whole thing is over. And then they turn against you as though you were the devil. And they firmly thought that you were one who was sent. That is all in Scripture. Read the seventh chapter of the book of John and the eighth chapter of John. And some said he's a good man. And others said, no, he's leading people astray. And others said, well, he's mad and he has a devil. When he fed them with the loaves and the fish, oh, they loved it. Getting things in the world. As long as they could have things and things and things, oh, he's marvelous. And then he tells them of something entirely different. 
that they would go through furnaces. That the end would justify all the furnaces through which they would pass. The end would be God. They would awaken in the end, and they would awaken as God the Father. He didn't tell them of the nature of the furnaces. He told them only of the end, and but they would pass through furnaces. And passing through, they faltered. They could tell exactly what they were really doing on the inside. As we are told in the 50th Psalm, if a man orders his conversation aright, I will show him the salvation of God. If one could only control these inner conversations, 